Have you ever paused to wonder about the essence of the universe, the force behind all creation? Today we delve into the nature of God, a supreme being who is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. God, as we understand, is not just an entity, he is the origin and the sustainer of everything. Imagine the vast universe with its countless stars and galaxies. All of this, both material and immaterial, springs from God's divine will. Interestingly, God is described as a father, emphasizing a nurturing and protective character. He's not just a distant creator, but a constant presence, guiding and loving. This is reflected in the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three forms, yet one essence, enveloping the universe in a divine mystery. The beauty of this belief is that God wasn't born nor created by anything. There is nothing above him or below him. This infinite nature makes him the ultimate source of all wisdom and love. Now how do we connect with such a supreme being? It's through love and a deep understanding of the Bible. The Bible isn't just a book, it's a bridge connecting us to the divine, teaching us the values and principles to lead a life aligned with God's will. We are honored to have insights from St. Alex Asabi, a preacher and author who has spent his life exploring these profound questions. His teachings remind us that comprehending God's nature is more than an intellectual exercise, it is a journey of faith, love, and surrender. Remember, understanding God is understanding the very essence of life itself. As we explore these spiritual depths, let us open our hearts to the divine mysteries, finding peace and purpose in the eternal love of God. Join us as we continue this journey, seeking not just answers, but a deeper connection with the Supreme Being. Thank you for tuning in, and may your path be blessed with divine light. Excellent. Trust in Him. This is Psalm 516. Trust and obey. If you trust, then you obey. The problem is how to get to the question where you can trust. That is, if you have faith, that means you trust, and therefore you obey. Thank you for fasting for three days. For three days from the 13th to 15th of December. We always say that we are most blessed. We always say that we are Christians to God than any body in this world. All the churches, this is the only university church of God only. I don't say that there are others. I say the only university church of God is this church. Very fish saying this place. It is this church. Now it starts from how should we be the church? The orator, the preacher, the pick, the, the choir, John Wesley, Charles Wesley, John Wesley, the orator, the preacher. The Wesley is in paradise. Jack saw him in paradise. Then, supported by the choir, the choir master, those in the choir. So that the preacher should be very holy. The choir, those in the choir should be holy as well. And then the congregation, the elders, should be holy. That is why we are right at the peak. I said that there's no other university church of God apart from this, because it's only this church where, when we die, we go to so high, which is church God, God Father's kingdom. And I'm telling you, nobody in this world knows where the kingdom of God is. It is written in the Bible, who would not know because they, they don't know where it is, and therefore, they don't preach about it. They mention it casually. But we know that the sixth heaven, that can be made, is God's Father's kingdom that we preach. That's what Jesus Christ said. He did. And he said that among all those born of women, there hasn't been anybody greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is the least 
in the kingdom of God is greater than John the Baptist. Least. Threshold. He says, he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than John the Baptist. Doesn't mean that John the Baptist is in hell. No, John the Baptist is in paradise. All others are in paradise. It is this which is the path of Jesus Christ coming. It is this that takes people to soul heaven. It is this. This is the second coming of Jesus Christ. Which nobody knows apart from us. This is the second. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of men. Until then, don't look for him. So he appeared the second time. The second time is now. Without sin. Without sin. <laughs> All right. So this is the second coming of Jesus Christ that people don't know. And that is why we, we know it. Because the leader of this church is the only one in the world who has seen God. Only one. I say only one who has seen God. Moses saw the bad part of God. God didn't allow even Moses to see it. That's why God was saying that. Oh, what? The Lord always chant. The Lord, the Lord, let's be gracious. Look, that God Himself, He must for us, forgive the people and transgression and sin. That's what made me clear the guilt. So, God Himself, that we also say, that is in the Bible, people will not understand it. So, brother, I say that we are the most blessed. And the only university church of God is this church. It's, it's this church. And then we are in the end times. So we preach justice, abomination, and ostracism. Justice, do unto others as we like them, do unto you. That is, don't do anything which is wrong. That is justice. Abomination. Abomination. Abomination We mean fornication or adultery. Alcohol. And smoking, this three. If you do this, it is impossible for you to go to heaven. What well, well polluted? The voice will not come to dwell in you. What else? We say about the other ostracism, ostracism, ostracism. As for ostracism, we keep it. Others don't keep. That is why our body is holy. Ostracism, that is don't eat this, don't eat this, don't eat that. That is in the middle of chapter 11. That you don't eat pork and so on and so forth which makes the body holy. That's why our body holy. We are not polluted. And then our spirit is holy because impartation of Holy Spirit, that is what we do. As John the Baptist said, I have baptized you with water, but he who comes after me, Jesus Christ, his cousin, baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. That is by impartation. That's what we do. How many churches do? Baptized by impartation. That is the height that we have reached. We never use water for baptism. Water may lead to the granting of the Holy Spirit, or may not. In most cases, water doesn't lead to the granting of the Holy <coughs> Spirit. But John the Baptist, Jesus wanted to make a point there. He said, baptize me. Oh, I don't qualify to baptize you. Even the larger of who I don't, I don't qualify. He said, baptize me. If I told them, Jesus got baptized, was baptized by John the Baptist. What happened? A baptism when he went out of the water, then the dove, the form of dove, Holy Spirit. God said, You are my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So the Holy Spirit showed himself. But Jesus Christ himself was conceived of the Holy Spirit and born of the Holy Spirit. But when he came to this world, now he put on the human form. He will sit on the human form. But why is that? John the Baptist will have to baptize him. He himself, he gave the Holy Spirit to John the Baptist in the mother's womb. You see, people will not understand this because this is Holy Bible. So only those who have the Holy Spirit who understand the Bible. And we have the Holy Spirit, the superior Holy Spirit. That is why the light on the earth is that of the Son. Throughout the world, all others, churches, all other churches, if there are two, two uh, three, three uh, exceptions. Now, when God came, the Holy Spirit was not mentioned. God said, You are my children. 
keep my commandments. So if you, do, if you sin, it means that you are not the child of God. That's the meaning of keeping my commandments. I thought God said his commandments. I said, summary, love the Lord thy God, love your heart, mind and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's the summary of the Ten Commandments. Love the Lord thy God, love your heart and soul. The Holy Spirit, what it is given to you, that is the, the vertical one. Then when you have the Holy Spirit, you don't hate anybody. Love your neighbor as yourself. That is justice. Do unto others as you like them do unto you. So we don't hate anybody, no. So, the ostracism, sin, very common, and a type of sin. Just two types. The first one, why, what was the sin? Commission and omission. If you do something which is wrong, you commit it, that is sin. If you don't do something which is right, it's sin. If you know somebody is suffering, you can help the person, and you don't have the person, that is sin. So there are two types. Commission, doing something which is bad and you do, that is sin. Doing something which is good and you don't do, that is also sin. And you have different levels of sin. That's not a topic. And we say that, oh, this lesson, I didn't come to avoid the laws, but fulfill to make it strong. Even if you see a woman, and you lust after the woman, they have committed adultery already. The last. So we have spiritual sin and we have physical sin. So the physical sin physically. And spiritual sin is something which you do. That's why I say that any foolish thought is sin. Any foolish thought. If you see if you, you think that you lust after somebody and you think about doing something which is then it is sin. That is spiritual sin. So before you enter into the physical one, you have two sins. The spiritual one was there because you lust after. And then the physical one is there because you have committed, committed it physically. When God said, oh, you are my children, don't commit sin, that spiritual one was not added. Physical one, if you go into it, then you have sin against me. But Jesus Christ said, I didn't come to abolish it, but for fit to make, to strengthen it, even if you last. That is, he brought about the spiritual sin to enable us that any foolish thought is sin. Any foolish thought, that is why you are above everybody. Because if any foolish thought comes to your mind, you know it. And Satan is using you. So that is why you have to stand and say that this is Satan trying to deceive me. And that was why Satan managed to deceive Eve. He managed to deceive him because he, he, he tried to say that, oh, but this one is, uh, there's nothing wrong with this, and so on. But God, already God had warned them that if you eat this, this fruit of good and uh, evil, you will surely die. God had warned them. But Satan cunningly deceived them. That is why any foolish thought is sin. Because it is Satan who starts to do that. So that those who came to this church and left, Satan deceived them. But how can Satan deceive us? No, we are above that. That's why when you are in this church, know that any foolish thought is sin. So we are above everybody. There are a lot of people who go to church, and I have been saying that only about one person who go to church go to heaven. And that is, that is true. About one person who go to church go to heaven, to hell. Why? Because at least they commit one sin. Who so long shall I keep the whole law and you know, change one discussion of all? And today, the announcement is on God Himself. God Himself. God is the source of and origin of the universe, both material and immaterial. God is a supreme spiritual being who was neither created nor born. He created everything in the universe, the heavens and the earth, 
God created everything. He is a male. Why? Because he describes himself as a father and as being three in one. God himself. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He from God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Since he is the Alpha and Omega, we read about this. The beginning and the end of everything. So you listen to this. So if you have the book, this book, you have all this. What I'm reading is from the book. Because when you read it once, you will be able to get all this. So some of you just read it once and then you throw it away. You read and read and read, and the more you read, the more you understand. So this is the book that has been written by you. So that is why I'm emphasizing on this. It says, since he is the Alpha and Omega, meaning the beginning and the end of everything, it literally means God had no beginning and will never have an end. No beginning, no end. God has created everything. So what is the beginning? And what is the end? No beginning, no end. That is the meaning. And therefore, he is eternal. From everlasting to everlasting. That is Psalm 90, verse 2. From everlasting to everlasting to God. Names of God used by Christians include Ancient of Days, Father, Abba, Most High, and the Hebrews' names are Elohim, El Shaddai, Yahweh, Jehovah, and Adonai. All these are names used meaning God. There is only one God, the Trinity of three distinct persons, the Trinity, the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, be from God. Some passages relating to the Trinity. John 1, 1 to 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. The above confirms that Jesus Christ is God and has been with the Father from time immemorial. They have been together. That's why we said that Jack explained it. Father from the left, just right from the left, coming together. That's part that comes with the fire. That is the Holy Spirit. That's why we say that baptized the Holy Spirit and with fire. And why? Because the fire that burns all the misdeeds in that, the person's body. Because the person has been misusing, has been fornicating, has been taking alcohol, has been smoking, has been taking lies, thinking ill about people. So the fire precedes the Holy Spirit because it's holy. And therefore, will not enter the, that filthy body. So the fire will have to come and burn all the past misdeeds before the Holy Spirit enters the body. Before the Holy Spirit enters the body. So that now the Holy Spirit in the body. These, the passages, the Trinity, in the beginning, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made. The above confirmed that Jesus Christ is God, the truth. That's why I say that, let us make man in our own image. So John 7, 16, Jesus answered, them and said, my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me, God who sent him. So anything that he did, 
God was there, the Father. The Son does what the Father tells him to do. And then, John 10, 30 says, I and my Father are one. As we said, that we come together, oneness, together always. Now, for my Father is greater than I. Just I said that. So the Father came first. That's why the Old Testament, that is the Father. We hear of the Father, the Father, the Father. We hear of Jesus Christ, what the three, uh, uh, Abishal, uh, uh, the, the three, what is it? Who were the, 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 that then? And then he says that the forefather is like the Son of Man. That is the fourth. So Jesus Christ is hiding. So Father was working, that is the Old Testament. Jesus Christ came, the New Testament. The second coming is now received in this one. So he says that, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and come and preach peace to you, which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. That is, you came to preach to mankind. For through him, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. God the Father sent Jesus to reconcile man to him, hence his death on the cross. So Jesus Christ came to reconcile man back to him. Because he created man, they created, or he said, let us create man. They created man in their uh, own image. Why? Because Adam, Adam when he was created, when he was wounded on the ground and was motionless, that God breathed in him the breath of life. That was the Holy Spirit. What happened? He became a living soul, the soul that lives. That's why the Bible says, the, the soul that sins dies. So the soul that lives, that is what we have, the soul that does not die. That's why in Psalm 23 it says that, he is with my soul. The soul that was given to Adam, that he lost because of sin, has to be restored, which people don't know. Jesus Christ restored, restored it. He says that, the Lord my shepherd, I shall not want, make it me brother in him, but he me beside the steam waters. He restored my soul. Jesus Christ restored the soul. Why do you take him? Then he leads me in the path of righteousness, doing only that which is right. The path of righteousness. That's why he said that holiness and righteousness, without which no man can see God. And Jesus Christ said it. That's why he said it might be born again. Because he didn't come with the Holy Spirit, apart from Jesus Christ and John the Baptist. That's why he said it might be born again. People don't understand it. But the point the second time, if you are not born the second time, it says, except, that is the only condition, become a child of God. Except you're born again, you will never see the kingdom of God. You never go to heaven. Except you're born water and the spirit. The water, people say that water, 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 then he went to a uh, uh, Baptist and said that, oh, then he, he, he baptized with the hot water first. So I'm going to be baptized with water. Stupidity. Water and the spirit, the, the birth, that is father and mother that you born. The, the, the second birth by God himself, where he gives you the Holy Spirit. That's what the emphasis on it. And it's further explained in, in, in verse five, uh, 6. All right, verse 6. They say, what is flesh is flesh, what is spirit is spirit. Flesh is flesh means the first birth by flesh. And the first birth, you sin because Psalm 50, 51, verse 5 says that in sin did my mother conceive me. Why? Because of Adamic sin. And because you're a descendant of Adam, when you are conceived, you're conceived in sin. That's why Jesus Christ said, you must be born again when you come to this world, you must be born the second time. In order to become a child of God, except the only condition. Now it says that, and I'll put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. My spirit, which I give you, 
them, my statutes, then you obey me. You keep my commandments. So it's only when you get the Holy Spirit that you're a child of God. And people don't know. And they preach and preach and preach from head to toe. No. Just Christ came to save us from our sin. So long as you sin once in your life, you don't have the Holy Spirit. Because it's Satan who has made you sin. It means that Satan has control over you. So, once you sin, it's Satan who makes you sin. And therefore, Satan is controlling you. That's why this verse says, Oh, whosoever is born of God, sin not love. Whosoever is because of the Father, keepeth himself, that the wicked one touches him not. This is the first Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. Keepeth himself, that the wicked one touches him not. So that Satan doesn't touch you. So if Satan deceives you and you sin, he has made you sin. And therefore, you are not serving God, you are serving Satan because he controls you. When the Holy Spirit is in you, you are serving God, the Holy Spirit directs you so that you don't sin. But Satan will always be hovering around people, those who are here and left, because they sin. That's for our church, when you sin, you cannot be here. You cannot come. No. You can't come. This place, the Holy Spirit is in the whole world. You can't come. You see, some they are attracted, some they, they come, when they come, they listen to us. When they go, they, they don't come back again. Because they see that that's why this place you come. Some have got eyes, so that when they come, they see that we are not able to. You see, you see that we have to still go with my, my what is it, uh, with Satan. Then the next one, it says, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Know you not that you are the temple of God? And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. When one is born again, God sent His Holy Spirit to occupy one's body. That is why our bodies are the temple of God. The Holy Spirit in the S. That is why our bodies are the temple of God. And then they say that, behold, the kingdom is within you. Wherever God is, the kingdom is there. Kingdom means king's domain. That is where the king dwells. That is kingdom. That is the kingdom of kingdom. King's domain, where the king dwells. That is God. Where dwells in us. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. So God himself came to work. The Old Testament. And the comforter also came to work. When Jesus Christ was still there. Before Jesus Christ died, it was the Holy Spirit working. Until the time, this time that Jesus Christ came, the second time. Now it's Jesus Christ working in us. It's Jesus Christ. This is the part of Jesus Christ's second coming. It's Jesus Christ working now. That is the beginning of the end of the world. You see the chaos everywhere. People don't know what, everywhere, every country, there's chaos. The Bible has said it. There will be wars, rumors of wars. There will be earthquake. We hear of all this, all around us, that in the end times. This confirms how the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost are interrelated with the Father, guiding them what to do. This also affirms the oneness of God in the Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. When one is there, the three of them, but one working at that time. If God was working, came to work, the confidant that will send in my name, the Holy Spirit came to work. Now it is Jesus Christ working. The word God usually refers to the Father but includes Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. The word God, God, is surely refers to the Father. But the God stands for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. God is spirit in nature, residing in the spiritual dimension of heaven, but is everywhere, at any time. God's primary nature 
is spiritual, but he is able to take on physical form in order to interact with human beings on earth. The Trinity and oneness of God are shown in the following passages. And God said, let us make man in our own image. That means that in our own my wife. That stands for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is made man in our own image. In connection, in all that, in connection with the Tower of Babel, the Lord said, let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another, another speech. That is, that is where we have uh, the Tower of Babel. That is, then all of them could not talk again, but that was uh, what is it? Also, I heard the voice, the Lord saying, "Whom shall I send? Or whom for us? Here, Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord. Who has seen God? All right, Exodus. And the Lord said, Thou canst not see my face, for." There shall no man see me and live. All right. Then what happened? And the Lord said, I will take away my hand, and thou shalt see my back part, but my face thou shalt not see. That's why he said, The Lord, the Lord, the simple gracious, don't stop abandoning goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands. That's what God said when Moses was looking at him. God, at any time, the only begotten son, which is in the bosom. But the man, Shach Daniel, Kisli Arthur, the founder of this, of this Chaka Domain Church, states his experience in seeing God as follows. With faith, or we say it with fortitude, and fervent meditations every day. It was in the midnight of 23rd December 1952 when I fell into deep trance. I saw a powerful light piercing through the ceiling direct to my bed where I was lying. I saw the sky very calm and clear, as clear as crystal. Immediately, the class began to gather up in big sizes. And I saw a very bright figure in the shape of a person floating there. The scene came into a clear view. And behold, there stood a man, very beautiful and lovely to look upon with a body which gives light brighter than any electric light. I was told that he was Jehovah, the omnipotent God. So Jack, the only one, the whole world, who has seen God. That's why the second coming of Christ passed through him. That was in 1952 that he saw God. And this church was established in 1956. Four years after this, after seeing God. The natural attributes of God, all right, about God. God is spirit. God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Since God is spirit, for one to worship him in spirit and in truth, one must have God's spirit in him. Not just go and say, hallelujah, hallelujah, and say, praise God. How do you praise God? The spirit is not there. It's when we are giving in to God and the spirit is in you. That's why it says that not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of God. But he who does the will of my Father. It is only those of us whose praises please God. So many say, praise, praise, praise. No. So long as you disobey God, so long as you sin, your praises will not reach God. So long as you sin, your prayers do not reach God. So your iniquities have separated you from God. 
and your sins have hid his face from you, that he cannot hear you. <laughs> it's very pathetic. You pray, 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 pray. Your prayers will not reach God. But you sin, you take alcohol, you commit fornication, you, 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 you take a jot, and then you, you don't even uh, greet people because you are annoyed with them. Your prayers will not reach God. Now, since God is spirit, for one to worship him, the spirit of truth, the man must have the spirit of God in him. God is omnipotent. God is all-powerful. That is another, another attribute. And when Abraham was 90 years old, that is 90 years old and nine, that is 99 years, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the mighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. So he said, walk before me, be thou perfect. God is omnipresent. God is always present. Everywhere. He is everywhere at any time. Now, whither shall I go? As we read, from thy spirit. Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up unto heaven, thou art there. I think we read it this morning. Psalm 139. If I do this, you are there. I make my bed in hell. Behold, thou art there, etc. That's what I read this morning. God is omniscient. omniscient. God is all knowing. He knows everything. Whatever you do, everything is saying. God knows it. You know it if you do not do what? You know it. And Satan knows it. Why? Because it is Satan who makes you sin. Satan who makes people sin. And therefore, Satan knows it, God knows it, and you yourself you know it. So if there's one sin in one's life, one is not born again. Omniscient. The death of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgment and his ways past understanding. God is changeless. God does not change. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall not change. God does not change. God is eternal. He knows the past, the present, and the future. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, said the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come. God always existed and always will. He is the source of life. God is three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And the way, the truth, and the life. No man goes the Father, but by me, only Jesus Christ. God is holy. Holy comes from the root word that means separate. It refers to God as separated from or exalted above other things. And one cries unto another and said, Holy, 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 the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of glory. Holiness refers to God's moral excellence. Holiness is God's gift that we receive by faith through his son Jesus Christ. Ephesians 4, 14. Holiness is absence of faults. It is purity. It means to be Oh, the race of false and set apart by God. God is righteous. The righteousness of God refers to his moral laws laid down to guide the conduct of mankind. God is righteous. And therefore, as I said that, he restored my soul. He leaded me the path of righteousness. All this are in the Bible. A few will not understand it. Well, when they read over the papas, but God, they won't understand it because it is Holy Bible. The Holy Spirit is the only interpreter of the Holy Bible. And finally, God is love. God gives His Son to suffer for, our, uh, for mankind. That's the love that God shows to man when Adam sinned. And God is truth. Doesn't tell any lie. God is wise. He says that the only wise God, 
Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. And uh, this refers to God. So wisdom is only God who is wise. That is the wisdom. That is the godly wisdom. That is what we have. Not worldly wisdom. People have worldly wisdom where they can cheat people here and there. Anything wrong that they do, they think that they are clever. That is worldly wisdom. God is forgiving. That's why when you are offended, you forgive. If God says, vengeance is mine, I will repay. I will take vengeance. That is why we don't harbor any, any drag. No, 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 no. We put everything for God. In conclusion, God is one. With the Trinity living in the the Father, guiding the Son, and the Spirit, God is God. He is almighty and supreme. His power is infinite. And everything about him is beyond human understanding. We thank God for this. Amen. The passage of Revelation is taken from 1 John chapter 4. 1 John, the epistle of John. The person to the apostle. First John chapter four. So we hear the word of God. Beloved. Believe not every spirit. Or try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come, the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist. Whereof we have heard that it should come. And even now, already, is it in the world. Here of God, little children, have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth. In the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And this was manifested, the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son to the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to propitiation of our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. And we have seen, and do testify, that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess 
that Jesus, the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God had to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, he hateth his brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God, loveth his brother also. He ended the reading of the streets of the Lord of God. And the Lord that is present with us, the name of the Lord of God. Amen. Amen. Two types of spirit. Beloved, believe not every spirit. If you preach and don't preach the Holy Spirit, you are preaching a different spirit. We preach the Holy Spirit because we are the Holy Spirit. That's why it says that. But try the Spirit whether they are of God. Yes. Somebody stands and is preaching to you. You should know whether the person might have up having the Holy Spirit. And what he's saying is not from Satan. So if he doesn't have the Holy Spirit, how would he preach about the Holy Spirit? So those who preach, most of them are being misled by Satan. Because we don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't qualify to stand in the pulpit to preach. You don't qualify. And that's why 90% of people who preach are not preaching. Not preaching. Are not preaching sinlessness. Are not preaching sinlessness. Because the only one the Holy Spirit is in you, that you cannot commit sin. While the Holy Spirit is not in you, you commit sin. And therefore, the spirit which is in you is Satan. Because it's Satan who makes you commit sin. That is why. God, you see everybody. Oh, the, 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 the temple there. Uh, 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 the preaching. Two, two meters. Then the, no, that is the end times. So the spirit working is not that of God. Not that of God. That's why people go to church day in and day out and they continue to sin. Here, if you don't want to serve, serve God, when you come here, you come once, you will not come again. Because you know that you committed, and you want to continue sinning, and therefore you cannot come here again. That is the difference. That's why I tell you, you cannot come here, then go back. Some will pass by, then they come and, and sit down. When they go, do they come again? They don't come again. Why? Because they see that this is different, that they will not stop sinning. So, because Many false prophets are gone out in the world. Many false prophets. We say that we want to cry. False prophets because it is Satan using them. And that is what You see here, oh, they, they, they are oh, we perform miracles here. Satan using them. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come, the flesh is of God. Yes, you admit your guilt. You acknowledge this. And don't try to say that you must confess and forsake. If you confess, then you have to forsake to stop doing it. I say, no, go, go to the, the, the pastor or father, and then go and confess your sin. And then you have to confess, try to confess your sin. Then when you go back and you continue in sin. Continue in sin. If you confess and forsake, so if indeed your confession is, is the true confession, it means that then you stop sinning. Confess and forsake the sin. So 20 times, one day, go and confess to the pastor, the, uh, the minister. Oh, I've done three hundred days, go back. 20 minutes, you come back. No, I've done this again. You confess and forsake. And every spirit that confesses not, 
that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit, Antichrist. So Antichrist around all the time. Those who don't preach that the spirit of God, then it is Antichrist against God. But if you tell, oh, we are he heals. Oh, he has got the, the power. Power from where? Power from Satan. Yes, God gave Satan power. And therefore, Satan uses them. He said, ye are of God, little children. I have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. It's Christ in us. Holy Spirit in us. God is in us. And that's why we don't commit sin. So if you commit sin, it is not Christ in you. You go to church. But it's not Christ in you because you sin. Once you sin, it's Holy Spirit which, which, is, which, is, which, is, which is in you, which is using you. So we have three, three types. A person may have all the own uh, what is evil spirit. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit in you, then Satan uses you. So Satan uses some people, he uses them to do evil things, and then Satan withdraws. It says, ye are of God, little children, have overcome them because greater, yes, we have overcome them because it's, it's, the Holy Spirit is in us, God is in us, now Jesus Christ is in us. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them, yes. That's why I don't move with everybody. No, the birth of sin together, brothers flock together, that's why Christians move together. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby we know we, the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. All right. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. That is why when we are born again, when we get the Holy Spirit, is love. That is why the cross symbolizes it. It's when you have the Holy Spirit. Then you love. That's why when the soul is restored, you lead it with the path of righteousness. You don't hate anybody. But it is an affirmation that you have. You are a child of God and the Holy Spirit is in you. The love, let us love one another. He that loveth not loveth not God, for God is love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. If you believe in him, if you love me, keep our commandments. If you say that you believe in him and you don't, you don't sin, you sin. With that, you don't believe in him. It is when this belief you have to see, it is in two faith. In other words, what you do will be the affirmation of your belief. If it is, has not reached faith, then you continue to sin. Your belief is false. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son to the world that we might live through him. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his only Son to the appreciation of our sins, the appeasement. Jesus Christ came. Not that we love God, it means that it's God's love that makes us also love him. So that when we take him, then we reflect it, then the love is there. If you love me, keep my commandments. We don't keep commandments of God, it means that you don't love God. No man has seen God at any time. If you love one another, God will let him ask, and his love is perfected in us. So our behavior, what we do, a big affirmation that you are a child of God. You don't hate anybody. Any help that you can give, you give. And give it freely. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he had given us his Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that is in us. Because of that, that we don't do wrong things, that we love everybody. That anybody that we have to support, we support. If we are able to support it, we do. That is the love. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess 
that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in, in God. So if there are people who are confessed, I confess. I confess it, that, that if you say that, oh, I believe, I believe, I believe. No, if you admit, yes, you, you have sinned. But you confess and you forsake. You stop sinning. People confess the, the, the same day. If I have to go for confession, no, I've done this, so forgive me, all right. Go and sin no more. And we have known and believe the love of, of love that God had to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, in God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that he may boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. So in the trick of our eye, we be changed. Christ is in us. Therefore, if we put this body, we put lay down, we are in heaven. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth away the fear. He that fears is not we love him because he first love. All right. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. And the first person says, if you hate your brother, it means you are a murderer. It means that you wish you, you, the person was dead. And therefore, you can kill the person. You don't hate anybody. Why should you hate? God is in us, and heaven is our uh, uh, goal. Uh, rest in place forever. And this commandment have we from him that he who love God loves his brother also. And then it is when the soul is restored that he is the path of righteousness. You do only that which is right, and therefore you don't hate anybody. This is perfect love. When Christ is in you, and there's perfect love wherever you are. Because, as you say, by the most blessed, why should you love somebody? Why would you hate somebody? Always extend love. Either you love or you hate. There's no middle way. Are you do the right or wrong? There's no middle way. Either you go to heaven or hell. There's no middle way. Don't do bad and don't do good. And thinking that you are going to heaven. You don't even go to heaven. You still have to the whole law and yet offense in one. 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 Take one to hell. We thank God for this. Amen. Amen.